Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to wrap up uh, nonlinear systems. Well, today we're going to wrap up conic sections by teaching you how to solve nonlinear systems of equations. Okay? It's very simple, actually. If we go back in time, you'll remember that we have already solved linear systems of equations. Linear systems of equations. Linear being, remember, where x has a degree of 1, y equals mx plus b, where b is the y-intercept, m is the slope. And x, of course, has a degree of 1. That's a linear. And when you have two of them together, or two or more, you create a system of linear equations. You guys remember, the solution of any system of linear equations is the ordered pair x, comma y. Please remember, you know, there's an x-axis, and there's a y-axis, OK? And every point on that axis is called an ordered pair. So it's where any the ordered pair satisfies both linear equations. So for example, I gave you a nice easy one here. I gave you two linear equations, 2x plus 2y equals 6. As you can see, I wouldn't have even solved for y here. I would have used the x and y intercept method. When x is 0, the y intercept is 3. When y is 0, the x intercept is 3. And then I have my blue equation, which again, I'm going to use the um, x and y intercept method. Remember, when, whenever the coefficients a and b are factors of c, the constant, go ahead and use the x and y intercept method. When x is 0, my y intercept is negative 2. And when y is 0, my x intercept is 3 as well. Look at that. That's where they uh, intersect. The intersection is 3, comma 0. That is my solution. If I were to plug that point that ordered pair 3 comma 0 into either one of these equations I will have a true statement that you remember that guys all right then awesome nothing is changing except the equations are a little bit more complicated to graph I promise that's the only difference Today we will see that the same principle applies to nonlinear systems of equations. In order to solve a nonlinear system of equations, simply graph each equation and find the solutions which will equal the intersection points of both equations graphed. Literally. For example, right there. You have an ellipse and a hyperbola. Where are the solutions? Right here. Where they intersect. Okay? Now. You could do this via substitution, via elimination. You can. I'm not going to make a big deal about that, though, because at this point, when you get to this high-level mathematics, guys, you guys are going to have calculators. And those calculators will do this for you. But I want to make sure that you know how to do this and that you understand the concept, because I don't want to leave you guys empty-handed. Okay, but this is all we're doing. So we're going to do a couple examples and boom, we'll move on. Okay, for example, let me just show you real quickly, really quickly, what you could do, which we're not going to do, but what you could do. In essence, I could do uh, elimination here. I could multiply the top by a negative 1, making this a negative 3x plus y equals 2, cancel the y's, I got 2x squared minus 3x equals, uh, that's going to be a positive 2, so equals 2. Guys, do you remember that all we have to do here is go 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 equals 0, and then factor this, and then use the zero product property, and then find the x values. Once we find, we're going to have two x values, right? Once we plug in each x value to find each y that goes with it, we're going to have four points, right? In this particular situation, we're going to have four solutions. So if they ask you for exact values, you're going to have to go substitution route. I'm not going to finish the whole substitution problem because you guys are not babies. Hopefully you understood what I just said. That made sense what I said, right? You just, here you factor it or you complete the square or you use the quadratic formula, remember. There's three, you have a lot of skills here, guys. Once you find those x's, or once you find those x's, you plug them into this one or this one, find your y, 
and then you have the solutions. Um, well, no, it depends. This, well, no, there's a line. Yeah, this is only going to have two solutions, actually. Yeah. Yeah, there's only going to have two. Yeah, because an X and an X and a... Yeah, hello, two solutions, not four. Yes? Come again? Okay, as long as you have the right answer, the question was, you don't care about the graph? Um, no, I still care about the graph. If you put the exact solutions, though, that's going to make your graph that much more accurate. Okay, my brother? I'm not going to kill you with this on the test. Okay? The goal isn't to hurt you guys. The goal is to expose you guys to this so that when you see this on an SAT or something, you have different ways to approach this. Me, personally, I'm going to solve for y. So y is going to equal 3x plus 2. Guys, remember, I subtracted the 3x, but then I divided by a negative, okay? So that's that one. And then this guy, it's going to be y equals 2x squared, period. Subtracted the 2x squared and divided by a negative. You guys with me there, all right? Okay, so let's do this first one here. So I got plus 2, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, up 1, 2, 3, over 1, down 1, 2, 3, over 1, down 1, 2, 3, over 1. And that is my line for that one. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this guy. Now, do you think I'm going to start worrying about the vertex and the directrix and the focus and all that stuff? No. I was explaining this morning, the focus and the directrix are awesome. But when you really graph a parabola, guys, you're not going to have to grab a fo fo um, graph a focus and a directrix in real life. The focus and the directrix are just there so you can understand that in real life, guys, let's say that I was going to build some sort of a satellite, okay? And I have a city grid. And for whatever reason, this is the spot that I want the main information to go to. That's the focus of this satellite dish that I am building, okay? And let's just say that it's at 96.7 comma whatever, uh, 58.4. And whatever those units are, that's longitude and latitude. And then I say to you, I want to build the center of our station here at this point, which is whatever, uh, whatever the, the the point is for that. Where is the vertex of the hyperbola for this uh, satellite that I'm going to build? Well, it's going to be right here. What is that point, though? I can't just flip a coin and say, gee, I hope it works. That's why you need the focus and the center in that particular example for real life applications. But when they tell you graph on the SAT or the ACT or on one of my tests, you can graph the parabola using a multitude of tools. You can factor it, find the solutions, and then find the vertex and the y-intercept, graph it. If you want to find the focus and you want to find the, 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 the vertex and you want to find the directions, you could do it that way as well. You can make a table, okay? So th does that make sense, guys? So for this one, in my opinion, the easiest thing here would be to make a table, wouldn't it? In this case, in your head. 0, 0. When x is 1, 1, 2. When x is negative 1, 1, 2. Right? Why am I going to stress here? Now, is this exact? Is this accurate, what I just did? No. Am I going to accept this on a test? Yes. Yes. As long as you show me. That's this. That's a solution, which is an estimate. It's about negative one comma one half, roughly. And this guy here, that's a solution, which is roughly one point five comma one two three four five six seven. Roughly, those are estimated answers. That will be fine. Maybe for extra credit, I'll say find the exact solutions. And then you would have to actually solve by elimination or substitution. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. So let's just do a couple more, and then we'll move on to Jeopardy. Okay. Solve the system of equation by graphing. Okay. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Y equals negative X plus 2. Done. 2, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. Backwards, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Boom. That's my line. That should be that fast, by the way, for linears by now for you guys. Okay. This. What? 
first of all, let's see my boys are, are on top of this. What is this? Circle. Yes. What's my center? Negative two, one. Boom. What's my uh? What's my radius? Three. three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Sometimes, as you can see, life is 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 perfect, and you don't even need to do substitution. That's why I'm not focusing and getting hung up on substitution or elimination. If you know what you're doing here, guys, there's no doubt that was a perfect intersection. That's just perfect. The solutions here with this guy, which is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2, comma, 4, and 1, 1. Those are perfect solutions. If you were to plug that into here and here, I guarantee you get the right answers. That's why I'm not hung up on, you must eliminate, you must, vote, you must uh, uh, um, do substitution, you must. No. I want you to know that there are tools out there that you can do. Could you have done substitution? Of course. Y equals negative X plus 2, right? Plug into this Y, negative X plus 2. And then square it, though. Remember, so you're going to have to do foiling here. So in this particular case, would it have benefited you for me to go the elimination or the substitution route? No. Would it have benefited you in this first example? Oh, sorry. Would it have benefited you for this example, though, guys? Yes, actually. Yes. This gave you, this graph gave you a pretty nice good estimate. But in real life, this would not have cut the mustard. You would have had to have substituted algebraically, okay? Does that make sense? Okay. Last one and we're done for the day, for, for this, and then we'll go to Jeopardy. Okay, what do I got? Impress me. A circle. Sorry, I make a better door than a window. Go. <laughs> Done. Hello. So, um, center for the circle. Zero, zero. Two, 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 two. Have a good day. For the parabola, this is uh, y equals negative x squared. Ah. Uh, uh, Oh, hello, yeah, because I forgot to divide by... Sorry, sorry, that was an epic fail. 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, 1, 2, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3... Thank you, brother. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4... Bam. Okay, would it have benefited you to do this one using... Elimination or substitution? Yes. If I said sketch the graph, though, would you have bothered going elimination? No. Realistically, is this correct if you went like that to those two points and went solutions? Is that technically correct? Yes. You graph this accurately, man. Those are the solutions. Now, you want to go exact? Then you go back to what I had said before. Let's say, you know, you know that y equals x squared, right? So you would go x squared plus x squared to the second power equals 4. So you have x to the fourth plus x squared minus 4 equals 0. Right? So then you're going to have x squared minus 2, x squared minus 2 equals 0. And then you start solving from there. Does that make sense, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, zero, yes, thank you. No, no. Zero, zero is not a solution because that's inside the graph. The solutions are where the actual graphs intersect along the actual uh, conic section. Does that make sense, guys? We're done. Let's get ready for Jeopardy.